Strategic Dream, Putting the Power of Your Subconscious Mind to Work by Joseph Murphy. Reach new levels of career success using the power of your subconscious mind. Chapter 16, Managing Your Time. Stop writing blank checks such as, there is not time enough to go around, there is too much to do, etc. Such statements magnify and multiply your loss. Suppose somebody came to you and said, I will give you $86,400 a day every day, but you must spend it all each day. You will get no more or no less every day. You cannot keep it or save it. Wouldn't that be a wonderful gift? God gives each of us a similar gift. 86,400 seconds each day of our lives. We must use up these seconds each day. We cannot keep them or save them. We can throw those seconds away on frivolous pursuits or let them fly by doing nothing. Or we can use them to develop our mind, to work or to play, to be with our friends and families. To help other people use this gift well, it is a gift from God. Controlling your time. Many of us are unaware of the power we have over controlling our use of time. We are like the poor woman who had lived for all her life in the back country. She moved to a progressive little village where to her great surprise, she found that her new home was lightened by electricity. She knew nothing about electricity, had never even seen an electric light before. And the little eight candle power electric bulbs with which the house was fitted seemed very marvelous to her. Later, a man came along one day, selling a new kind of electric bulb, and asked the woman to allow him to replace one of her small bulbs with one of his new style 60 candle power bulbs just to show her what it would be. She consented, and when the electricity was turned on, she stood transfixed. It seemed to her nothing short of magical that such a little bulb could give so wonderful a light almost like that of sunlight. She never dreamed that the source of the new flood of illumination had been there all the time, that the enormously increased light came from the same current, which had been feeding her little eight candle power bulb. We smile at the ignorance of, his, of this poor woman, but the majority of us are far more ignorant of our own power than she was of the power of the electric current. We go through life using a little eight candle power bulb, believing that we are getting all the power that can come to us, all that we can, that we can express or that destiny that will give us. Believe that we are limited to eight candle power bulbs. We never dream that the infinite current, a current in which we are perpetually baited would flood our lives with light, with a light inconvincibly brilliant and beautiful. If we would only put in a larger bulb, make a larger connection with the infinite supply current. The supply wire we are using is so tiny that the only a little of the great current can flow through. Only a few candle power when there are millions flowing past our own very door an unlimited supply of this infinite current is ours for the taking, ours for the expressing. Our time is like that current. Many of us are current to use it like the eight candle power bulb. When we have within us the potential to use our time much more effectively, just as changing to a brighter bulb can give us more brilliant light, so can changing our management of time enable us to accomplish much more in our lives. Set time related goals. The first step in good time management is establishing goals. What you wish to accomplish is the allotted time. Unfortunately, mean, many people are action oriented rather than goal oriented. They think only in terms of their immediate action that must be taken rather than the results that are sought. A time related goal is one that relates the importance of what has to be achieved to the corresponding work schedule. 
once these goals are clearly stated, plan your time so that you can give priority to the most important matters, the one that will help you meet the goal. Whenever there is a conflict of what to do first, unless the urgency of the situation requires immediate action, the activity that leads to meeting your goal should get the highest priority. Set priorities and stick to them. Charles Knob, the man who Andrew Carnegie picked to manage Carney Steel and who selected to head the new Bethlehem Steel Company, was fond of telling the story of how he learned to manage time. He consulted Ivy Lee, one of the pioneer management consultants. Some of his famous clients were J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, the DuPont, and many giant corporations. Schnobs told him, I'm not managing now as well as I know how. What we need here is not more knowing, but more doing. If you can give us something that will help us do the things we already know, we ought to do. I'll gladly listen and pay you anything you ask. Fine, said Lee. I can give you something right now that will increase your action and doing at least 50%. Lee asks Snob to write the sixth most important task he had to do the next day and then to number them in order of importance. He then said, when you come in tomorrow morning, look at the item number one and start working on it and don't start any other item until you have completed it then do the same with item two and then item three and so on until quitting time don't be concerned if you only finish two or three or even if you only finish one item you'll be working on the most important ones the others can wait spend the last five minutes of every working day making out a similar list for the next day List the items you have not finished and add the new matters that have come up. Put them in priority order again. You may find that some new items are more important than the items from the previous days list that were not completed. In those previous days, items go back at the bottom of the list. If this continues to occur, it means that these matters were not important enough for you to do. They either should be dropped or delegated to another person. If after several days you find that it, if you can't finish all the items by this method, you couldn't have with any other method either. And without some kind of system, you probably wouldn't even have decided which were most important. After you have convinced yourself of the worth of the system, have all the members of your staff use the same system. Try it for as long as you want and then send me a check for what you think it is worth. The whole interview lasted 25 minutes. In two weeks, Snoop sent Lee a check for $25,000 a minute. A minute. Snoop often told people that this lesson was the most profitable he had ever learned. Did it work? In five years, Snoop turned his company Baltimore Steel into the biggest independent steel producer in the world, making Schwab a fortune of more than a hundred million dollars. Make a master list and follow it. Follow Ivy Lee's advice. Set priorities and stick to them. This is the essential ingredient of effective time management. Use list. Start by writing a master list on which you put down everything you want to do. List them as they come to you. Importance is not considered. Rather than using loose paper, keep a notebook in which you can jot down every item you wish to accomplish. Review the master list daily. Divide large projects into manageable components. Determine priorities. Which items should be done today? Which can be deferred? Which can be delegated? Develop a daily list for what you plan to do today and tentative list for the balance of the week. Put on your calendar items that are deferred to later items. Evaluate the daily list in terms of the importance to meeting your goals. Schedule time for performing items on the list taking into consideration the urgency of the matter as well as how it will pay out in terms of value to your goals. By consistently following this principle,
procedure. You will condition your subconscious mind to approach your daily activities in a time-oriented manner. Know your energy levels. Each person has levels of energy that vary over the day. Determine your periods of high energy. Some people work better in the morning, others later in the day. Some people work better right after eating, others are lethargic for an hour after lunch. Schedule difficult and complex tasks for high energy times. Keep a time journal. Do you know how you spend your time? Most people have only a vouched concept of where the time goes. I have asked this question to countless people. Some had not given much thought to this but had an innocent, canny, innate ability to utilize their time eventually. On the other hand, some have set up time journals to record how they were spending their working hours. You may question a busy person's ability to take time out to keep a time journal. Yes, it is tedious and sometimes you can be so involved in an activity that it is neither feasible nor appropriate to stop and enter items in a journal. Realistically, in such a situation, you have to do your best to track your progress in the program. But if you miss recording a segment in your journal, write it up as soon as thereafter as possible. Keeping a time journal is not something you need to do forever. It should be done for at least three or four days each week for about two or three weeks to get good sampling of how you spend your time. Then you can study the sheets and analyze just where most of your time is going. Once you learn in what areas your time is wasted, you can take steps to correct them. Some are easily corrected, others are more complex. Flakes that steal your time. You had planned a full day's work. You had it all nicely scheduled. Now the day is over and only a fraction of what you had planned to accomplish had been done. Where did the time go? Most likely, you tackled the projects on your master list with full intent of completing them. But no sooner had you start, started than you were hit by one or more of the plagues that steal away our time. There are dozens of these time robbers. Review your time journal and you will see what are the most common time robbers that plague you and what we can do to minimize their effect. Interruptions from subordinates. Probably the most frequent interruptions are from one own subordinates who have problems that they believe require your immediate attention. Most likely there are some people who interrupt you more often than others. They bring you every little problem rather than try to work out solutions themselves. One way to identify who these people are is to keep a record of these interruptions. Note the name of the person, the type of problem or question, and how long it took to deal with it. By reviewing this record periodically, you will see who is taking your time and what problems they are bringing to you. Sometimes the problems that they bring you are important in your advice, opinion, or orders are needed for them to continue the work. But more often, they bring you matter that they should really deal with our, their own. Jack Welch, the brilliant CEO of General Electric, reported that the subordinates brought him problems that he believed they should have solved on their own. He responded by asking them, why do you think should be done? By throwing the problem back to them, he forced them to think about it more. After a while, his staff members stopped coming to him unless his personal decisions was absolutely required. Follow which practice. Tell your staff members that if they bring you a problem, they should also bring you at least one suggestion as to how it could be handled. In this way, they will have to think about it more truly and will often resolve the matter without interrupting you. And if they do have to speak to you, the time they take will be much shorter. The CEO of a Fortune 500 company told me that he became so annoyed by constant interruption from his staff with problems and questions. He notified them that unless the situation was so urgent that delayed would cause, 
irreparable damage, they should hold their question until 5 o'clock. Every day at the time he opened the door to deal with these matters, it didn't take long for people to start trying to solve their own problems rather than wait till the end of the day. The telephone. You're sitting at your desk deeply engrossed in your work and the phone rings. It is a colleague with a business question. But does this colleague get right down to business? Not usually. He or she will chat about the weather, his weekend activities, her vacation plans before starting the business discussion. The time spent on the most business calls could be shortened significantly if callers concentrated only on the business at hand. However, to eliminate all personal chit chat could have negative effects as well. A little social conversation smooths the relationship between people and helps develop a more pleasant work environment, resulting in more cooperation and teamwork. Keep the social aspect of the conversation to a minimum. If the other person persists in lengthy unrelated discussions, politely say, I would love to hear more about your party, but I have a pile of papers here I have to get to right away and then move into the business aspect of the conversation. Keep calls brief. Plan the call before you pick up the telephone. List the key points you wish to cover and check them off as you reach them. One busy, busy business executive usually starts the conversation with a comment that he has just five or 10 minutes before leaving for a meeting and requests the other party to please keep a call brief. Where appropriate, send emails instead of phoning. Visitors. If you work in a busy office, it is likely that other members of the staff will come in to talk to you. Most times these are business related matters, but often they are just social visits. Such visits are nice as they may break the monotony of the work days and sometimes help develop closer relations with other staff members, but they can be time consuming. Try to keep social visits to a minimum. If a colleague makes a practice of visiting you just to chat, diplomatically bring the visit to a close as rapidly as possible. If an uninvited person calls on you, for example, a sales rep, meet in the lobby instead of your office. Do not invite him or her into your office unless you are really interested in the product or service. Meetings in the lobby can be concluded in a few minutes. Once inside, it may take a lot longer to get rid of the sales rep. Another suggestion is to stand when talking to visitors who come into your office. Invite them to be seated only if you want them to stay. Another way to minimize interruption is to set aside one hour each morning as privacy time. Put a do not disturb sign on your door. Set your voicemail to take all the calls. Let your staff know that that hour is a private and unless there is a real emergency, you are not to be disturbed. Make sure your boss knows and approves so he or she won't break into your private time. You'll be amazed how much you can accomplish in that one hour. Reserve some time for yourself. All of us have lives outside of our jobs. We need time for families, our non-worker activities, and ourselves. Don't let your job overwhelm you. Jeff Winston of Santa Monica, California created The Counter, a successful fast food chain in which customers can custom build their hamburgers. As the chain grew, he was working 24-7 with no time for himself and his family. He tries to set up a schedule and to budget his time. He tried not bringing work home. He tried to accomplish it all, but nothing worked until he finally figured it out. He realized that if he could custom build burgers, he could also custom build his time. The trick, he says, is being fluid. To move seemingly from one area of your life to another, his schedule includes starting his day by doing something for himself. He goes to the gym before work. He arrives at work later, but in a better move, treating coworkers better, making them more productive. 
he accomplishes more and has more time to enjoy with his family. One way to build in more time for yourself is to delegate more of the work you usually do to others. Analyze your workload. You will find that often you are doing work that subordinates are fully capable of doing. Even though you may truly enjoy the face of the job, it is far more effective to let others do it. Review chapter 11 for suggestions on how to delegate effectively. Don't be afraid to say no. One of the most frequently heard complaints is that people feel overworked. I am loaded down now and the boss gives me another project. What can I do? You don't have to accept every assignment. Quite often the boss may not be aware of all the things you are working on. Speak up. Don't get upset or lose your temper. In a calm manner, explain just what you are working on and ask the boss to help you determine the priorities of each assignment. The boss may suggest you stop work on less important matters or may choose to give the new assignment to somebody else. It is not only your boss who may ask you to do the things you are too busy to do. You may be asked by a coworker for assistance you may be asked to serve on a commitment by a community organization in which you are a member. Before accepting or rejecting such a request, think carefully about the amount of time it will take. If you are truly too busy with higher priority matters, politely decline. Be patient. Managing time does not mean that things must be accomplished in a rush. Many real accomplishments are the results of long and patient efforts. Too many people lack patience. Everything cannot be accomplished immediately. Can't wait is a characteristic of the century, and it is written on everything, on commerce, on schools, on society, on churches. Sum and substance. Make a master list in order of priority and stick to it. Schedule an hour of private time each day, time free of interruptions and distractions. Use this time to review your schedule and adjust it to fit current priorities. Plan your day so you use your most energetic hours for tough matters and those hours when you are not at peak levels for leisure matters. Delegate. By delegating items of lesser importance to others, you free yourself to deal with higher level matters. Learn to say no. Your time limitations on how to say no tactfully when it will help you to reach your goals. Turning your dream into a strategic dream. Dream big. Peace.